Hello, everybody. It's Matthew here from our Early On. We're inside our room here at the Early On today. Now, if you were already here in our program, ooh, I can take that off for now. If you were already here in our Creative Artist Program earlier today, we just finished making oh, goop. That's right. But if you missed it, that's okay, because I'm going to show you how to make it right now. Okay, so I've got a great big mixing bowl, okay? And in this great big mixing bowl, I'm going to add one and a half cups of cornstarch. That's right, cornstarch. Many of you might have it already at home in your kitchens. That's what we're gonna use. So one and a half scoops. I'm using a half scoop. So I have to use three, one half, and then a second half makes one, and then a third half makes one and a half. That's right. So one, two, three scoops. Knock it out, because sometimes the powder, right, the cornstarch likes to stick inside. So, whoa, there's my cornstarch. Now to that, I'm going to add one cup of water. Ta -da. I got my nice little watering can here. You can just use water right from the sink. And now already we got this nice gluey kind of mixture. But I think we want to add some fun things to it. We've got food coloring or watercolor paint. You can add a few drops of that. Just add some fun color to it. I've got yellow. And earlier today, we were actually using red for Valentine's Day and a little bit of yellow. We eventually turned it from pinky red to orange. So to it, I'm just going to add some more yellow to get a nice bright yellowy orange. Maybe a nice sunshine kind of color. And I'm just working my fingers along in here. And now the one thing that you're gonna notice, here, I'm gonna pick up my camera. One thing you're gonna notice, oh me, oh my, is when you're mixing it, it's oh, tough. It's tough to stir. You know what, if you are using a spoon to stir this, don't even bother. Just get right in there with your fingers, it's going to be a little messy, but it's going to be fun. <laughs> and if you notice, if you really try to scoop and dig, you can see by my face, the goop, the cornstarch and water ugh, makes like a very tough, almost like a hard clay kind of feeling. But then if you get it into your fingers, it just melts away. It's so amazing that this goop can be both Hard, hard, hard like a rock, and soft, soft, soft. I just love it. And you know what? If you notice after a while, stirring and mixing and playing, if you notice it starts to get kind of a little thin, right? A little watery like this, you just add another scoop of cornstarch in, and it hardens back up and gets nice and gooey all over again. <laughs> Now, I also wanted to share this activity with you today, not only because it's super fun, but also because I have a story I wanna share with you. I have a story that I borrowed from the library and it's called the Oobleck. Yeah, you heard me right, the Oobleck. That's a funny sounding word, right? And Oobleck is like another word for slime or goo or gloop. <laughs> so it's kind of like another name for what we're making here with this cornstarch and water. So I'm going to tidy up and then I'm going to share with you the incredible story of the Oobleck. Oh my gosh, well I had so much fun playing with that Oobleck, with that goop, right? 
And I actually thought I would share with you this amazing story called Bartholomew and the Ublek. And it's by Dr. Zeus. Yeah, a very well-known author. So many great stories. I bet you probably have a couple favorites of your own. Well, I'm going to read to you Bartholomew and the Ublek. So slimy. They still talk about it in the kingdom of Did as the year the king got angry with the sky. And they still talk about the page boy, Bartholomew Cubbins. If it hadn't been for Bartholomew Cubbins, that king in the sky would have wrecked that little kingdom. Oh my. Barthol Bartholomew had seen the king get angry many, many times before. But that year, when His Majesty started growling at the sky, Bartholomew Cubbins just didn't know what to make of it. Yet all that year, the old king did it. All year long, he stared up into the air above his kingdom, muttering and sputtering through his royal whiskers. Humph! The things that come down from my sky! All spring, when the rain came down, he growled at that. And all summer long, when the summer sunshine shone down, he growled at that. All autumn, when the fog came down, he growled at that. And that winter, when the snow came down, he started shouting, This snow! This fog! This sunshine! This rain! Bah! These four things have come down from my sky. But King Derwin, Bartholomew tried to calm him down. You've always had these same four things come down. That's just the trouble, bellowed the king. Every year it's the same four things. I'm mighty tired of those old things. I want something new to come down. Something new to come down? That's impossible, your majesty. You, you just can't have it. Bartholomew, don't you dare tell me what I can and cannot have. Remember, I'm the king. I know, sire, I know. You rule all the land and you rule all the people. Even kings can't rule the sky. Yeah. Can't, eh? His majesty flew into a terrible rage. Well, maybe other kings can't do it, but maybe I'm the king who can. You mark my words, Bartholomew Cubbins. I will have something new come down. But how? to get something new to come down. That was rather hard to think of. And for many days, the old king stomped around, stomp, 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 trying to figure out some way to do it. Then finally, one night, when all the lords and ladies in the palace were fast asleep, just as the king was buttoning up his royal nightshirt, he suddenly stopped. A strange, wild light began to shine in his gray-green eyes. Why, of course, <laughs> he said, laughing. They can do it for me, Bartholomew Cubbins. Blow my secret whistle. Quick, call my royal magicians. Your, your magicians, your majesty? Bartholomew shivered. Oh no, your majesty, don't call them. Now, Bartholomew Cubbins, you do as I command you, blow my secret whistle. Yes, sire, but your majesty, I still think that you may be very sorry. He took the king's secret whistle from its secret hook. He blew a long, low blast. <laughs> down the king's back secret stairway. 
and a moment later he heard them coming. Up from their musty hole beneath the dungeon, up the empty midnight tunnel to the royal bedchamber, came the magicians on their padded shuffling feet. Up and right into the room they came, chanting, Shuffle, duffle, muzzle, muff, fista, wista, mista, cuff. Tell us what you wish, O king, our magic can do anything. I wish, spoke the king, to have you make something fall from my skies that no other kingdom has ever had before. What can you do? What will you make? For a moment they stood thinking, blinking their creaky eyes. Then they spoke a word, one word, Ooblek. Ooblek, asked the king, what will it look like? Won't look like rain, won't look like snow, won't look like fog, that's all we know. We just can't tell you any more. We've never made Ooblek before. They bowed and they started toward the door. We go now to our secret cave on Mystic Mountain, Nika, Nika Tave. There all night long we'll work for you and you'll have Ooblek when we're through. They'll do something crazy, whispered Bartholomew. Call them back, your majesty. Stop them. Stop them? Not for a ton of diamonds, chuckled the king. Why, I'll be the mightiest man that ever lived. Just think of it. Tomorrow, I'm going to have Ooblek. Well, it took Bartholomew a long time to get excited king to sleep that night. But there was no sleep for Bartholomew. All night long, he stood in the king's window, staring out at the mystic mountain Nikatev, where something was up. He knew, he knew the magicians were working their terrible magic. And all night, the magicians did. All night, they walked circles round their magic fire, making magic mumbling with their clucking tongues. Oh, snow and rain are not enough. Oh, we must make some brand new stuff. So feed the fire with wet mouse hair. Burn an onion, burn a chair. Burn a whisker from your chin. And burn a long sour lizard skin. Burn yellow twigs and burn red dust. And burn a stocking full of dust. Make Magic smoke green, thick, and hot. It sure smells dreadful, does it not? That means the smoke is now just right, so quick before the day gets light. Go, magic smoke, go high, go high. Go rise into the kingdom sky. Go make the oobleck tumbling down on every street in every town. Go make the wondrous oobleck fall. Oh. Bring down Ooblek on us all. Dawn was just breaking and Bartholomew was still standing, trembling, watching at the bedchamber window. But now, as the sun rose, Bartholomew smiled. Those silly magicians, they didn't do a thing. Then, suddenly, Bartholomew Cubbins stopped smiling. Was, was he seeing things? No, there was something strange up in the sky. At first it seemed like a little greenish cloud. Just, just a wisp of greenish steam. But now it was coming lower, closer, down toward the fields and farms and houses of the sleeping little kingdom. It was swirling around the topmost turrets. Those are the big pointy towers. Around the topmost turrets of the palace, tiny little greenish specks 
were shimmering in the air right over his head. Strange little greenish blobs, just about the size of grape seeds. He stretched out his hand. He started to catch one. Then he pulled his hand back. There was something frightening about those blobs. Bartholomew slammed the window shut. Wake up, your majesty, your oobleck, it's falling. And the king sprang out of his royal bedsheets. By my royal whiskers, it is. Oh, that beautiful oobleck, and it's mine, all mine. I don't like the looks of those blobs, sire, said Bar Bartholomew. I'm going to make it a holiday. I want every man, woman, and child in my kingdom to go out and dance in my glorious oobleck. Out in that stuff? asked Bartholomew. Do you really think it's safe? Stop asking silly questions. You run to my royal bell tower. Wake up my royal bell ringer and tell him to ring the great holiday bell. For a moment, Bartholomew Cubbins didn't move. Run, said the king, and Bartholomew ran. Across the sleeping palace, Bartholomew ran. Then up the ladder of the high bell tower, he climbed to the bell ringer's little cubby hole in the belfry. Ring your bell, he called. His majesty, the king, proclaims today a holiday. And the old man crawled out of his cot. He grabbed the bell rope. What's the holiday for, Bartholomew? You'll find out soon enough, said Bartholomew. And the bell ringer yanked the rope. Nothing happened. He yanked it harder. Still nothing happened. And he yanked it even harder. Hey, what's wrong with my bell? He murmured. I'd better take a look outside. And he poked his head out through the trap door. Oh, well, merciful gracious, what is that all over my bell like greenish molasses? Not only your bell, Bartholomew cried, look at that poor robin down there in that tree. She's stuck to her nest. She can't move a wing. That oobleck gooey. It's gummy. It's like glue. Ooh. A bell ringer wrung his hands. If that green stuff sticks up robins, it'll stick up people, too. Someone's got to warn the people, cried Bartholomew. Got to wake up and warn them to stay inside their houses. I'll tell the royal trumpeter, he shouted, and he turned and slid like lightning down the bell tower ladder. To the trumpeter's tower, Bartholomew Cubbins raced and on up the steps four stairs at a time. As he ran, he could hear the plop, plop of the oobleck on the windows. It was pelting against the palace walls as big as greenish cupcakes now. He yanked the covers off the snoring trumpeter and he shoved the cold trumpet right into his sleepy hands. Get up, get up, warn the people, blow your alarm alarm. And then the trumpeter saw the oobleck. Those, those green things, Bartholomew, where'd they come from? The king, said Bartholomew, his royal magicians made them. And the royal trumpeter jumped from his bed. That king of ours, oh, I'll blow the loudest alarm that has ever been heard in the kingdom of Did. But all the royal trumpeter blew was a glug. My horn. One of those green things flew inside it. And he tried to blow it out. But he couldn't. He tried to shake it out. But he couldn't shake it out. Well, I'll get it out somehow. I'll pull it out. He yelled. And Bartholomew shouted, no. Don't touch it. But the trumpeter's hand was 
already inside. His fingers grabbed hold of a lump of oobleck. He could feel it squiggle around in his fist like a slippery potato dumpling made of rubber. He pulled with all of his might and the oobleck began to stretch. And then, going, the oobleck snapped back inside the trumpet. It yanked his arm back in right up to his elbow. Now his elbow is stuck. I can't wiggle a finger, the trumpeters wailed. Oh, Bartholomew, what will I do? I don't know. And I hate to leave you stuck here. But if you can't warn the people of the kingdom, I've got to find someone who can. And out Bartholomew Cubbins raced and down to the chambers of the captain of the guards. The captain was humming in front of his mirror, combing the ends of his handsome mustache. Captain, do something. Do something? Why? What's wrong? Captain, haven't you seen the dreadful oobleck? It's coming down now as big as greenish baseballs. Oh, pff, that stuff. What's so dreadful about that? You know, I think it's rather pretty. Captain, it's dangerous. Nonsense. Now, are you trying to frighten me? Captains are afraid of nothing. That stuff's harmless. I'll show you. I'll eat some. Eat some? Oh no, said Bartholomew. But Bartholomew could, but before Bartholomew could stop him, the captain was leaning out the window, scooping up some oobleck on the end of his sword. Don't, Captain, don't. Then the captain did. And by the time Bartholomew dragged him back inside, his mouth was glued tight shut with oobleck. He tried to speak, but no words came out. All the noble captain of the guards could do was blow a lot of little green sticky bubbles. Boop, 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 boop. Forgive me for leaving you, captain, said Bartholomew, but a captain full of bubbles is no help at all. And Bartholomew went tearing through the, the palace, looking all over, I'll get the king's horse, I'll ride through the country, I'll warn the people of the kingdom myself. And he pushed open the door to the royal stables, and Bartholomew stopped. He could go no further. The awful oobleck was plumping down as big as greenish footballs now. Too late to warn the people of the kingdom. There were farmers in the fields getting stuck. There were goats getting stuck to ducks, geese getting stuck to cows. Outside the palace, it was piling up. Gr giant greenish tons of oobleck deeper and deeper on every roof. There was nothing Bartholomew Cubbins could do out there. Shaking his head sadly, he stepped back inside. But inside, a moment later, it was just as bad as out. With an angry roar, the oobleck was suddenly hitting the palace harder. It was battering and spattering against the walls as big greenish buckets full of gooey asparagus soup. Like a sinking sailboat, the whole palace was springing leaks. The oobleck was ripping the windows right off their hinges. It dripped, dripped, dripped through the ceilings, and it was rolling down the chimneys. It was coming in everywhere. From every bedroom in the palace came the howls of lords and ladies. Frightened and in their nightgowns, they came jumping to their doors. Go back to your beds, go back under your blankets, Bartholomew Cubbins cried. But nobody paid any attention. And everyone in the palace started rushing all around. The royal cook rushed down to the royal kitchen, and Bartholomew Cubbins saw him trapped there, 
stuck to three stew pots, a teacup, and a cat. The royal laundress rushed outside to save her laundry, and Bartholomew saw her stuck tight to the clothesline between two woolen stockings and the king's best Sunday blouse. He saw the royal fiddlers. They were stuck to their royal fiddles. Everywhere Bartholomew ran, he saw someone stuck to something. They were stuck up by the dozens. Every last friend he had in the world was flopping and floundering, all helplessly caught in the goo. Then, suddenly, midst the hubbub, Bartholomew gasped. <gasps> the king! Where was the king? He had forgotten all about him. It was in the throne room that Bartholomew found him. There he sat, old King Derwin, proud and mighty ruler of the kingdom of Did, trembling and shaking, helpless as a baby. His royal crown was stuck to his royal head, and his seat of his royal pants were stuck to his royal throne. Ublek was dripping from his royal eyebrows and oozing into his ears. Fetch my magicians, Bartholomew. Make them say some magic words. Make them stop the Ublek falling. Bartholomew shrugged his shoulders. I can't fetch them, your majesty. Their cave on Mountain Nikatev is buried deep in Ublek. Then I must think of some magic words. Oh, what will those magic words be? What would my magician say? Shuffle, duffle, muzzle, muff. That's all I can remember, and they don't do any good. The oobleck keeps on falling harder. Bartholomew Covens could hold his tongue no longer. And it's going to keep on falling until your whole great marble palace tumbles down. So don't waste your time saying silly magic words. You ought to be saying some plain, simple words. Simple words? What do you mean? I mean, this is all your fault. Now, the least you can do is say some simple words like, I'm sorry. No one had ever talked to the king like this before. What? Me? Me? Say I'm sorry. Kings never say I'm sorry. And I'm the mightiest king in all the world. Bartholomew looked the king straight in the eye. You may be a mighty king, but you're sitting in Ublek up to your chin. And so is everyone else in your land. And if you don't even say you're sorry, you're no sort of a king at all. Bartholomew Covens turned his back and he started for the door. But then Bartholomew heard a great, deep sob. The old king was crying. Come back, Bartholomew Covens. You're right. It is all my fault. And I am sorry. Oh, Bartholomew, I actually, I am awfully, awfully sorry. And the moment the king spoke those words, something happened. Maybe there was something magic in those simple words, I'm sorry. Maybe there was something magic in those simple words, it's all my fault. Maybe there was and maybe there wasn't. But they say that as soon as the old king spoke them, the sun began to shine and fight its way through the storm. They say that the falling oobleck blobs grew smaller and smaller and smaller. And they say that all the oobleck that was stuck on all the people and all the animals of the kingdom of Did just simply quietly melted away. And then they say, Bartholomew took the old king by the sleeve and led him up the steps to the high bell tower. 
He put the bell rope into his majesty's hands and the king himself rang the holiday bell. And then the king proclaimed a brand new national holiday in honor of the four perfect things that come down from the sky. The king now knew that these four old-fashioned things, the rain, the snow, the sunshine, and the fog, he knew that they were all good enough for any king in all the world, especially for him, old King Kerwin of Did. <laughs> My friends, that is the end of our story today. Thank you so much. Thank you for being there with us and learning how to make oobleck or goop or slime all by yourself using really simple ingredients. And thank you for enjoying this story with me today. I hope your slime and your oobleck doesn't get all super sticky and get all over and stick to you and stick to your pets and your parents and everything. I hope you have a really fun time. Thank you so much. Have a good day.